Yeah, so, so first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for organizing this event every year. Uh, so uh, today what I'll talk about is, uh, is uh, one of our work in the last year, which is uh, this so-called thermodynamic uncertainty relation uh, in Markovian and non-Markovian regimes. So the details, so this work was done in collaboration with Divira Segal at University of Toronto. And we are also uh, doing an extension version of this work uh, with my PhD student, Sushan. Uh, and you can find the details uh, of this work in, in this uh, paper. Uh, so before getting into any details, let us just uh, very quickly recall what we uh, know from, uh, you know, uh, uh, in the non-equilibrium physics, in, 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 the, in, the, in the context of uh, linear irreversible thermodynamics. So as you uh, all probably know that uh, when you uh, take a system and you drive it out of equilibrium, let's say by putting uh, two parts which let's say are different chemical potential, uh, and if this uh, bias difference is not too large, then you are basically at the linear response regime, and you start to get uh, various type of universal uh, relations. So, and uh, these are sort of uh, relations uh, that you have is uh, namely on sagar reciprocity relations, uh, you also have so-called uh, universal fluctuation dissipation relation. Uh, so here uh, I've uh, shown a model example. So you have, let's say, a, a system which could be interacting quantum or classical. You have two baths, and let's say they are at the same temperature, but you put them under different uh, chemical potential. So that drives current through the system. And if you look at now the steady state current, uh, of course, as a function of bias, you can, uh, let's say, you can expand in this manner. Uh, you can as well go ahead and look at uh, the second moment or second cumulant, which is basically the noise in the current. And uh, that noise will have an equilibrium part as well as the, uh, the part which is coming because of the bias. So you can expand noise also in this manner. Uh, so what linear response theory tells you is that uh, this quantity S0 is related to this G1, which we call conductance. So this is the fluctuation, and this conductance is sort of related to dissipation. Uh, so you can get uh, this relation, which is we also called uh, in the context of uh, transport is, uh, is Johnson Nyquist theorem, or also this is like a fluctuation dissipation theorem. Uh, so well and good, these are all well established and well known. And the question that you can certainly ask is, what happens if I now go beyond linear response? Do I have you know relations that relates these higher order transport coefficients? And that question was answered also, uh, but uh, before getting there, I mean, what people actually found out was that uh, if you start looking at, you know, we are talking about uh, average current or basically looking at the current and it's all moment. So what you can in general talk about the underlying distribution of current. Okay, so and when you start looking at the underlying distribution of current, you start seeing certain form of uh, so-called universal relations, what is now famously called as fluctuation relations. So here I've written one of this fluctuation relation, which basically tells you is that uh, if you start looking at the probability of integrated current in a certain time window, let's say in a steady state, that is a random variable, so you get a distribution. And fluctuation relation tells you is that the probability of electron flowing from high bias to low bias is exponentially larger than the probability of having electron flowing from low to high bias. And this exponential factor, what you can identify as the so-called entropy production. Okay, so it depends on the chemical potential difference that you're applying across the system. So this is positive, so the probability of this is exponentially larger than this. Uh, and because of this consequence, of course, this is universal uh, in the linear response as well as far from equilibrium. So what you can have is, if you take the close to equilibrium limit, you of course get back the standard linear response theory that we know long time back. But on top of that, what you start to get is the relation between these transport coefficients in the higher orders. So because of this, now not only you have this relation, which was already there, you also start getting relations between higher orders. Okay? So that's an implication of fluctuation relation. You can take a look, you can, you can think like that. Uh, so to verify such fluctuation relation, we also recently did uh, one experiment. So if you're interested, you can take a look. So this was done in collaboration with, uh, with the quantum information group in, in Isaac Pune. Uh, but OK, so what I'm going to talk about today is, is one of the bound, or the so-called thermodynamic uncertainty relation, which basically talks about that if you have this current, now here you see that uh, this is a fluctuation and this is the current square. So this is like the relative uncertainty in your current. Okay, so, so, uh, so this quantity has a bound in terms of the so-called entropy production. So sigma is the entropy production rate, in fact. So, so this is basically is a, often called as a, a trade-off between precision and cost. 
So if you want your precision, your output to be very precise, you have to have more cost. You have to pay more cost for it, which is the entire production, which is coming because you're driving the system out of equilibrium. And this was derived for classical Markovian system. What people have shown, particularly this group by Udo Seifert and by England in MIT, what they sort of proved that these bound holes for as long as your underlying dynamics is Markovian uh, and primarily for classical Markovian systems. Uh, and you can show easily that this equality holds when your system is in the linear response. Primarily, if the distribution is governed by a Gaussian. Uh, so what we started asking is how universal this bound is. Okay, uh, is it really classical Markovian? Can I extend it for quantum domain? What happens if I go beyond Markovian? Uh, are there quantum effects that disturb such universal uh, such bounds? So, so my idea was that if this is universal, uh, then maybe uh, there should be a hint uh, from the fluctuation relation that I should be probably able to get this bound. Because fluctuation relation at the end is universal. So if this bound is universal, maybe there is a way to get reach there. And that's precisely what we tried to do. Uh, so so there are you know, a bunch of work on this. And it's still continuing you know, trying to investigate this bound for various type of systems. Uh, so here is what our you know, sort of very simple derivation of or trying to investigate what happens to this bound. So once again, we have this current and noise, and we expand it in function of, as a function of bias in a series. And I'm now using the fluctuation symmetry in terms of this transport coefficient, how they are related. Once I have this, I'm saying that I, my system has fluctuation symmetry. So you have these expressions. You have what is the entropy production, which is sort of like the joule heating. Uh, and this is your quantity that you want to look at. right? That's your uh, the thermodynamic uncertainty relation. So you want this to be greater than 2. I mean, if it is true. Okay, so what you start seeing is that you have two plus uh, the first non zero contribution comes on in the second order of the bias. You don't get any linear order in the bias term, which also makes sense. If you get a linear order, then what you can do is you can just simply flip the bias and you get a negative sign, right? So you can, in that sense, violate the bound. So, and that also has a, and, and the reason it gets zero is precisely because of this uh, particular term, S1 equal to KVTG. So, so what you first get is a uh, first non-zero contribution is at the order of v squared. So first of all, you get a two, okay, and then you get a correction term, which are in all higher orders of the bias, and this non this term is what given by the non-linear transport coefficient. And the idea is that uh, if this is less than zero now, then you will have a violation at least in this order, order of v squared. But if it is greater than zero, then you at least have some certainty. OK, and, and this derivation is quite general, because you, uh, all I've used is a fluctuation relation, which is true for classical or quantum systems. So this is in that sense. It's true. So now the whole idea is to see what happens to this guy taking in some model system. Uh, so, so what we started doing was like looking at simple non-interacting system, a charge transport model. So what you can have is this, let's say, a tight binding chain coupled to two bars at the two ends. And if it is non-interacting, you can immediately get this generating function, which generates all the moments for current which is also famously known as levitov lesovic formula. And we also derived at some point uh, using this non-equilibrium Green's function formalism, and they basically match. Anyway, so once you have the generating function, you get the currents as well as fluctuation and all the moments. Uh, so current is a Landau formula. The fluctuation governs by not only the transmission, T, but it also depends on transmission square. Uh, and given all that, you can sort of formulate, and you get this C non-equilibrium in this manner. Now, all I want you to see here is that if this guy wants to become negative, that's a signature of violation. And it can become negative because of this minus sign here. All these quantities are positive. But if this was positive, you have a, you know, uh, uncertain relation to be valid. But because of this negative sign, it can actually become negative. Uh, and so then, and, and it can become negative depending on the how is your transmission, the shape of the transmission, and how is the Fermi function looks like depending on all other parameters that you have in your system. So uh, there are various regimes that you can show that you know, the uncertainty relation does hold, uh, which I'm not getting into the details. There is one particular limit, which is what we call resonant tunneling limit, meaning that you have the, ratio, you have the transmission to be sharply picked. And in that case, you get this nice bound. If your transmission and transmission squared integrals have this type of uh, relation, you start to get uh, deviation from the thermodynamic bound uncertainty relation gets violated. So anyway, so these are, so basically now what you try to uh, cook up is different types of transmission functions depending on different type of systems. And what we saw is that if you, let's say, have a single dot coupled to two bars, you start to see violation in the strong system bath coupling limit. 
not at the weak coupling limit. The reason being, when I have weak coupling, you have a Markovian process going on. Uh, you can argue from the rate equation or quantum master equation. The moment you go to the strong coupling limit, you have higher order tunneling processes, and you start to see violation. Uh, on the other hand, if you have double quantum dot, you see an opposite regime where you have a weak system path coupling, you start to see population couples to coherence, and that gives rise to non-Markovian dynamics. And that precisely matches with our prediction of the ratio of the transmission greater than two-thirds. Uh, and uh, similarly, you can argue also uh, from other aspects. But uh, so, so the whole idea is that the moment you sort of go beyond Markovian regime, it looks like this relation the thermodynamic uncertainty bound is not really getting preserved. Okay, so, so, and this is sort of what we observe for different type of systems, either in the weak coupling or strong coupling. If you, if you deviate from Markovian dynamics, you start to see violations. So, so this is kind of the summary. So the uncertainty relation does, can get violated if you have a quantum system or if you have non-Markovian dynamics. And the question that you can ask, is there a, a type of a new bound that you can get for quantum systems? And in fact, in that direction, there is a very recent paper that just came out on archive, and if you're interested. All right, so with that, thank you. Thank you. Time for a couple of questions. No, no, so dissipation meaning that, uh, so uh, when you're writing the formula, what you have, you have a system coupled to the baths, right? So if you look at the dynamics of the particles, let's say, uh, those will satisfy Langevin equation. So in that sense, you, also, of course, have a dissipation term as well as a fluctuation term coming from the bath. So, one can, one can certainly, yes, point is that uh, all you need is to compute the moments uh, of the current as well as the noise. Uh, and uh, so, what we cooked up was a very simple, just non interacting model to show that even you don't have to go to the interacting model to see the violation. Even at the non interacting level, we can see. If you deviate from Markovian dynamics, you kind of, yeah, I mean, but the point is that you can certainly now start looking at what interaction does, I mean, uh, you know, to these bounds. That's not done. Yeah, my, uh, yeah so, so the current is given by generalized mayor in green, but you don't have really a generalized expression for noise if you have an arbitrary interacting system. So that's where life becomes a little difficult. Okay, last question. So, if you, I mean, if you take a classical system with um, whatever Markovian baths, uh, Markovian baths, then yeah. it will hold. If nonlinear and uh, yeah, then it will hold. That's that's what exactly there's a, we did. There's a general proof, is it? No. So, so proof. Uh, you have to look uh, to this paper by England, where they actually tried to bound the large deviation function. So if you can bound a large deviation function, which they say is 2.5, which I still haven't really figured out, but they can bound the large deviation function, which gives you the bounds in the moments through this. Uh, so for the classical Markovian dynamics, it's been done. So I would say even if you put a nonlinearity and all, it should be. But classical non-Markovian is what we are doing right now. Yeah, so, so that's basically, so, so this paper, so this last uh, slide that I showed, they found a bound which is four times less than two. So, it's big, so they're saying it's going to be half. Uh, and of course, our, all our numerics are always satisfying that. But I, my guess is that that's very loose. You can get a much tighter bound. Maybe one, maybe 1.5. Yeah, okay, let's thank Vijay for his talk.